Last week, the Department of Homeland Security said it reunited all eligible families who had been separated at the border as a result of the Trump administration's zero-tolerance immigration policy. The key word there is eligible. Hundreds of children still have not been reunited with their parents. A new Frontline report examines U.S. immigration policy under both the Trump and Obama administrations. In it, they speak with former acting ICE director Thomas Homan and ask him about audio ProPublica released of crying immigrant children. I did not hear the tape. I did not hear the tape. I can't believe that. I've heard many children cry in my 34 years. I don't need to hear children cry. Can I play it for you? Yeah. It's a young girl who asks to call her aunt. She wants to call her aunt. She has the number memorized. What do you think? It tugs at the heartstrings for sure. Earlier, I spoke with the correspondent for Separated Children at the Border, Martin Smith. Martin, you spoke with former acting ICE director Thomas Homan weeks after that ProPublica recording came out. We saw your reaction there. How surprising was it to learn that he had not heard the recording at that point? I was surprised. I mean, look, that led the, um, that was in the headlines for days. Um, but I ran into other um, advocates for the Trump policies that said the same thing, that they hadn't heard the tape, and I began to wonder if that was a tactic. On the other hand, I think Homan um, seemed um, honestly um, surprised when he heard it. it. It seemed genuine, so I have to assume that he was telling me the truth, that he hadn't heard the tape. Well, your film doesn't just focus on the current border crisis, but also the one we saw under the Obama administration. Why is that so important to understand what's happening now? I think it's really important to understand that getting immigration policy right is really difficult. Um, there are, you know, it, it's not a matter of open borders versus uh, zero tolerance. There are many um, uh, gradations in between. Um, and, you know, so the Obama administration struggled mightily to come up with a border policy. They considered separating um, children from their families, actually, uh, and we cover that in the documentary. Um, and they rejected it. The, the Trump administration decided that that was the best way they could think of to deter people coming across, so they went. But it's interesting to understand that the building out of, of family detention shelters uh, and other policies that were put in place as Obama tried to grapple with uh, getting this right, um, a lot of that fed into the um, ability of the Trump administration to do what it's done. So it, it's, it's an intertwined history. Well, you also traveled to Central America and the border to meet with parents and children who had been separated. What did these parents tell you about their children after they were reunited? Yeah, we have a, a, a couple of cases where they uh, are most certain that their children have changed. Um, one, uh, a young father from El Salvador, um, it took days before his daughter, his six-year-old daughter, would really even talk or open up. And when we, um, we went there twice, once when she was still um, in a shelter in Arizona, and then again after she returned. And when she returned, uh, just the day before we got there, she was starting to open up. But she was extremely uh, clingy and worried about being separated from uh, her father. She didn't want to go to school. Uh, another young girl uh, that we met, a 15-year-old girl, talked about the experience. She was separated for 38 days from her mother and, and really believed she may never see her again. Uh, gets angry easily. She just doesn't want to even think about what she just went through. And so it's a very emotional scene, as you'll see in the documentary tonight. Well, given that, did these parents say that they regretted coming to the United States? You know, um, one thing that was interesting is that this was meant to be a deterrent policy. 
But the parents that I talked to, beyond the ones that I've just mentioned, didn't really know that they were taking the risk of having their children taken from them. There was no publicity that was put out in on the other side of the border or in Central America that if you come, uh, no money was spent to to deter them before they came up. I'm really not sure how uh, you know how you run a deterrent policy and don't put the word out there, but they they seem not to um, uh, do that. Um, so, uh, they, you know, they came in, uh, I asked one father if he'd do it again, he said no, he would not do it again. Um, others simply, um, uh, you know, were not sure. And I do know that those who told me they wouldn't ever do it again are planning to come up again because they're worried about the violence. So they're really caught between the violence in Central America and the risk of being separated from their children if they come up. Now the policy has been dropped, but there's still doubt about whether or not they can uh, successfully get an, get asylum in the U.S., but they feel they have no choice. The violence that they're fleeing from is so severe. Well, it is a critically important issue and such an important conversation to have. Martin Smith in Boston, thanks very much for joining us, Martin. Elaine, thank you very much for having me.